have a very packed session today. So um, we have to kind of make sure we are running on schedule. So we want to get started immediately. So I put two links here, chronos.org slash openvx. That's where you find all the information about the specification and the forum where you, if you have any questions about the, uh, to the Kronos committee in terms of what is coming, any questions about the specification, you can post it there. All the tutorial material is on GitHub. It's openvx underscore tutorial. If you search there, you can find all the material, including the presentations today. If you have any questions about the tutorial, you can post it after today's session. Um, um, here is the agenda. I just want to quickly go over In the morning session. Um, Neil Trevett, he's the president of Kronos. He's going to give us an overview of OpenVX ecosystem, followed by Karipuli from Intel. He's going to introduce, give an introduction to the OpenVX um, and run through the first exercise. And after that, we're going to have a half an hour break. I suggest uh, make sure uh, you step out because you know exercise one is going to be intensive. Um, um, if you need extra time, use that one, but make sure you step out and talk to other people during that session, a break. And after the break, we're going to start with exercise two. I'm going to run over the graphs, which, um, which kind of takes to the next level of the tutorial. And after that, Thierry from NVIDIA, he's going to give us uh, some optimization about IOs. He's going to give a small presentation about that. And then lunch break. And the afternoon session, what we're going to do is uh, it's not going to be part of the tutorial, but it's a presentation from various people. Uh, one is from Jeff Beer. He's going to talk about uh, machine learning, oh, sorry, uh, machine um, vision, and where the OpenVX fits in there. And followed by Jesse uh, Vieriel, he's going to talk about um, the new spec that we announced this week, 1.1, and he's going to talk about the changes from 1.0 to 1.1. That's going to be very informative, very loaded. And after that, we're going to have presentations from NVIDIA, AMD, Imagination, and Synopsis about their implementations of OpenVX, and that's going to be pretty exciting there. And once we are done with that, um, at the late, uh, later afternoon, uh, Tidy is going to take over the third exercise, which is going to talk about user kernels. If you want to build your own functionality into the OpenVX that is not covered by the spec, that's the section to look at. Then we're going to wrap up. So with that, um, any other quick questions about our all session today? Not, I want to invite. Oh, you mentioned the USB box? Yes, this. Just copy the OpenVX tutorial folder, and inside that there is a readme.pdf. You can just follow the instructions in the section too. With that, I want to invite uh, Neil Travett from NVIDIA. He's the president of Kronos to give us an overview. Thank you, Rada. So uh, it's great to see so many of you here. Thanks for coming. Thanks for spending the day with us. Um, we worked hard to make it worthwhile for you. So um, we have asked the air conditioning to be make it a little cooler, so don't worry. And um, there's coffee all day. And when lunch is served, it's just next door. So I'm going to give you just the briefest of overviews before we get into the technical details to we just give you the context. If you haven't come across OpenVX before, how does it fit uh, in both Kronos' activities and in kind of the landscape of vision uh, APIs. So um, who's heard of Kronos before? Okay, most of you, but not everyone. So the Kronos is an open organization. We're open for any company to join, and we create open royalty-free standards uh, that hopefully help the industry um, be more productive and make better products. Uh, we're focused on APIs, that uh, enable developers to get to acceleration silicon. So that can be GPUs for 3D graphics, uh, for compute. So we have OpenGL, OpenCL, uh, the new generation Vulkan API, uh, and of course OpenVX uh, for uh, vision processing. We have, we have over 100 companies that are uh, helping us create these standards. So these standards are not being created by some mysterious council you know, in the sky with an agenda. It's the industry coming together to uh, create the API standards that we all need um, for uh, progressing the industry. So um, Kronos has been working in the field of vision processing for quite a while. Um, we actually have uh, a couple of sister initiatives alongside OpenVX um, that aren't as uh, 
developed as OpenVX. VX is really the core of our vision activities right now. Uh, but we do uh, mention these because we're interested to see if people are interested to join us to give more momentum to the whole vision pipeline. We have a, a pro project called OpenKCAM, which is an uh, initiative to uh, provide standardized interfaces to cameras and sensors. So that generates the image stream. And then that will be fed into OpenVX, which we're going to focus on today for processing uh, and doing vision processing on those images. And then finally, Stream Input, which is a sensor fusion API uh, to blend the output from the camera and vision sensors along with other sensors in embedded mobile devices. So as I say, OpenVX is you know, shipping today, getting a lot of momentum. These other two are much more uh, embryonic. But if they are of interest, you know, please uh, speak to me or any of the other Colonel Skies here today. Uh, we'd love to get your input on those. So the, a lot of the accelerated APIs that we work on you know, is providing access to hardware. And there are different types of acceleration hardware. And OpenVX uh, is you know, applicable to most of these. So, but of course, there are other APIs. I'm sure many of you have used some of these. There's the traditional graphics APIs focused on GPUs. But, but of course, they've become programmable with shaders. And so a lot of people actually do use OpenGLES shaders, um, Metal on uh, Apple, and the new generation Vulkan API. Uh, but they are focused just on enabling access to uh, GPUs. We have OpenCL, which is a low-level API, which we're not going to be covering today. Uh, but that lets you write C, C++ kernels, and have absolute control where those kernels are running on the heterogeneous processors, be they GPUs, multiple CPUs, FPGAs, DSPs. Um, but it is a low-level API. It doesn't come prepackaged with any uh, vision processing, per se. It's just a programming language. There's, there's CUDA, there's SICL that provide you uh, C and C++ language extensions to get parallelism onto primarily GPUs with CUDA. SICL built on top of OpenCL, so you can get a w wider reach of heterogeneous hardware. There's a lot of uh, discussion here in the summit over the last couple of days over neural nets. You would typically use a linear algebra library running on top of one of those acceleration APIs for accelerating uh, neural nets. Um, but then, of course, we come to the vision libraries. OpenCV, I'm sure it's familiar to everyone here, and OpenVX. So OpenVX is a higher level. It provides you vision functionality. But really, the point of OpenVX is that it provides you a higher level abstraction to target multiple types of hardware architecture. You can use OpenCL to get to uh, a bunch of different hardware. OpenVX even lets you reach out into dedicated hardware, which is uh, one way to get very low power, for, which is essential for many use cases. So you've come to the right seminar, because OpenVX gives you um, vision functionality, and it gives you breadth of hardware support. I'm sure many of you have used OpenCV. We love OpenCV. We actually work with the OpenCV guys. They use OpenCL for uh, acceleration in many cases. And we regard them as complementary. OpenCV is this wonderful resource. It's an open source project. Thousands of functions, lots of R&D goes on there, lots of experimentation. But OpenVX is intended to be a precisely defined specification, not primarily an open source project, which is needed for uh, deployment in production systems, tightly defined conformance tests, adopters programs. Um, so if someone ships OpenVX, it's very well defined what that actually means. Uh, people can ship it in their products to provide a callable API to their developer uh, community. And the, really, the, the main point of OpenVX is to provide portable uh, vision processing at potentially low power levels. Because if you want to run OpenCL, you know, which is one of the alternatives, uh, you have to have a pretty high performance CPU complex. You probably need a pretty high end GPU or DSP with full floating point support. That you know, is good for some applications, but it's not good for low power. So OpenVX, with this higher level abstraction, lets you reach out across a whole bunch of different um, processors, DSPs, dedicated hardware, to let us span the complete range of price, performance, and uh, power consumption with accelerated vision processing. And as 
the guys who know what they're talking about are going to be uh, explaining at length today. The key thing in OpenVX is graphs. Because we express the algorithms uh, as graphs, we're connecting nodes like Lego blocks together. The fact that the implementer has this graph information before anything starts to execute, it means that we can have the opportunity to optimize how that graph runs on the available hardware. And that optimization will depend on the type of hardware you're running on and what the implementer of the OpenVX library uh, chooses to optimize. But there are, here are some of the possibilities, and you'll see a kind of a mix of these depending on where and who you're running your VX uh, with. Uh, graph scheduling, you can actually take parts, different sub-graphs within the graph, run it across different pieces of hardware uh, in a system. Uh, because you know the memory usage up front, because you have the graph, it gives uh, implementers the chance to uh, optimize the memory allocation and reuse memory efficiently. Um, there's the chance to kernel merge, so this is like a, almost like a compiler optimization. You can take sub-branches of the graph again and begin to uh, coalesce the nodes together for more efficient uh, execution. And then last but not least, data tiling, where you split the images flowing through the graph into cache-sized chunks and have everything running in cache from beginning to end of the graph without constantly recycling to memory, which is you know, typically what you would do in an OpenCV type uh, application. And I'm, I'm sure there's others too. I mean, OpenVX doesn't dictate how uh, implementers optimize, but you know, again, you have more information because of the graph, so all of this uh, opportunity opens up. And this is not a marketing slide. This is NVIDIA competing with itself. But it's kind of interesting just to kind of show. Um, so this is OpenCV GPU accelerated, because we've been putting you know, um, OpenCV functions onto GPUs for a while, and versus OpenVX GPU accelerated. And because we have this higher level of optimization opportunity, you now we're actually beginning to find that actually coming true in reality. For some functions, it doesn't make much difference. For other functions, it makes a lot of difference. And you now we're finding two, three, four times uh, speed up you know, when we've uh, achieved good um, optimizations using OpenVX, and that's, you know, that's a good thing. And other vendors will you know, find the same thing too. So, um, a lot of people ask, well, you have OpenCL, you have OpenVX, they both, both can be used for vision processing, it's very confusing. So hopefully this kind of explains a little bit. OpenCL is lower level, it's a kind of down closer to the hardware like OpenGL. Some implementers will use OpenGLES or OpenCL for implementing the OpenVX nodes. Uh, but for the developer, uh, they don't necessarily need to understand how the nodes have been implemented, what API has been used to implement them. They just clip them together uh, using the OpenVX graph uh, uh, framework. And because it's a high-level abstraction, we don't need OpenCL or CUDA or OpenGL or Vulkan to be running on the low-level hardware. We can go directly over uh, using C, C++ on DSPs or just even directly into dedicated hardware blocks. So where are we in terms of commercial shipment? The, the 1.0 has been uh, the current spec, 1.0.1 has been the current spec version until Monday. Monday we released OpenVX 1.1 and we're going to give you some more details on that. So the current implementations that are shipping are OpenVX 1.0. So make sure you have the 1.0, and that's what we're going to be teaching you today because there are implementations available to use. So make sure you're using the right version of the reference cards. There's two versions of the reference cards floating around. The ones on your desk were the 1.0 reference cards. They're the ones you want to be using for the tutorial. Um, but 1.0 is now shipping on a bunch of different systems at the Embedded Vision Summit uh, today. No, there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight implementations uh, that are shipping. And OpenVX is extensible. Lots of people say, they look at the reference card and say, well, this looks good, the graph looks awesome, but there aren't many functions, and uh, we're going to be building more functions. But OpenVX is extensible. So any implementer is free to add nodes at any time uh, to meet their customer and market needs. Um, I'm going to skip over this because uh, Jesse's going to be talking about OpenVX 1.1. But we've added some nodes and the graph and the extension mechanisms are easier to use, but um, we'll learn more about that in just a second. I did want to mention just a kind of a little sneak peek into the roadmap. These aren't decisions, these are kind of discussions that are ongoing. Um, so for OpenVX roadmap, um, 
uh, we just came back from a meeting, uh, face-to-face -face meeting uh, last week. We're talking about significantly broadening the node functionality, uh, including neural nets uh, being included in the OpenVX graph. That's obviously a critical thing. Um, there's been quite a lot of demand for programmable nodes, people being able to write perhaps over either OpenCL or perhaps in import Spear, which is the Kronos intermediate representation. Uh, there's no decision there. It's kind of interesting discussions on how we might do that. Um, but also how we define um, something like feature sets or profiles. Because if we have suddenly hundreds of nodes uh, defined in the OpenVX spec, we don't necessarily want to force every implementer to ship all of those nodes into every market to be conformant, because that might be a lot of wasted effort and irrelevant functionality for people in markets that don't care about some of that functionality. So we want to find a way of carefully partitioning the profiles so implementers are free and enabled to ship the functionality that's relevant for their market within the scope of an overall coherent uh, API uh, specification. The other big thing is safety critical. Uh, we actually have some safety critical graphics APIs and they've actually become quite popular in avionics and then automotive. And I think we look forward to lots of vision applications that are going to be in robotics and autonomous vehicles. So there is an increasing discussion around building a safety critical version of OpenVX, um, make it easier to cer safety certify an open, OpenVX driver set. Again, there's no uh, decisions on that, but there's a lot of activity and discussion. So that's our wrap up there. So there are PDF cards around on the tables. Um, all the reference cards are also available, of course, for free on, as PDFs on the Kronos website, so go ahead and use those. Uh, we have a forum for OpenVX. I've put the link in here to the new OpenVX 1.1 discussion thread. Please give us your feedback. And you know, we have the opportunity today, as well as learning, talking to the folks from the OpenVX working group. We're really interested in your feedback on VX, the roadmap, the tutorial. You know, we want to uh, do the best job uh, we can. So again, thank you for coming today, and I'll hand it over to Carrie.